Thanks for joining us, Peter. Yeah, thank you for letting me in. So, uh, Upala, uh, uh, greetings, humans. <laughs> uh, Upala is a anti-civil, uh, civil resistance uh, provider for for the apps and uh, in, and decentralized digital and identity in the future. Uh, so, uh, what is Upala? Uh, we provide uniqueness score, human uniqueness score in dollars. Uh, Upala is totally on chain. Uh, the score is stored on chain and proved on chain. Uh, uh, there could be multiple identity systems built on top of Upala because Upala is a protocol. And Upala can wrap over existing uh, identity systems like Bright ID, I IDENA, and uh, other ones out there. So the main idea behind Upala is explosive bots. Uh, what does it mean is, uh, what it means is uh, anyone, any user of the system can escape at any time and uh, grab money. So uh, basically uh, the score is the amount of money a user can escape with. So I will, uh, this, I will explain it later. You will see how it works. So, and the main building block of Upala is group. A group has a pool uh, and uh, some, some number of users in it. So at this, at this uh, screenshot, we have uh, a group, uh, let's say of 40 users, uh, maybe every user paid $1 deposit to the group and by 40, 40 users, uh, the group has gathered a pool of $40. And this group may set a score of $10 to each of its users. So how does explosive uh, bots work? So this score is the price of explosion. If someone decides to explode, uh, this person will uh, get those get the score uh the amount of money which is equal to the, his or her score he will get this money from the pool and escape forever you see you now the number of users uh, declined and the pool declined but still everybody else will get the score of ten dollars and everybody will everybody in this group will still be able to receive a score uh until there is something in the pool, until a pool lets some uh, lets another attack. So in this case, if a pool is more than ten dollars, everybody in the pool gets a ten dollar score. So how do we scale? Uh, a group uh, may consist of not only users but groups as well. So we can see here the group from the previous slide and this uh, higher hierarchy group, a group of groups. So this group may add another $6 to a user score and everyone beneath that group in the, in the subgroups, every user in the subgroup, in subgroups receives a score of, of $16. And this goes up and hierarchy grows uh, we, we don't limit hierarchy to grow up so uh, here we can have a a higher level group which consists of groups of groups which consists of groups of users and this higher hierarchy group let's say now uh, gathered 1,000 users it gathered a pool of 4,000 and it adds another four dollars to user score so everybody all of this 1000 users get a score of 20 dollars and this is how explosion works in this setup if someone decides to attack uh, or to, exp uh, to explode that means to explode uh, this person will gather all the all the edit scores through the path of explosion so this user selects the top group as a target because this group uh, because this because it gives the maximum score. So this user uh, 
decides to attack this group and the money that this user ex escapes with is the total of all the scores given by this hierarchy. So now how the apps can benefit from that. Uh, the top level groups uh, may gather a lot of users underneath. That means that they can uh, act as score providers. So they uh, provide scores through the apps uh, and they may require a fee from the apps like that. So uh, this, uh, this setup uh, with uh, 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 that I showed that I just showed is a uh, general case uh, Upla protocol. We can call it a friends-based system. Uh, these groups are incentivized. This uh, lower level groups, uh, these lower level groups are incentivized to invite only trusted members in, because you don't want to invite someone who probably can explode and run away with basically your money. Uh, so this setup we could call a friends-based or another way to think about it is a friends-based and reputation-based based, anti-civil test to enter this hierarchy. But it's not the only way we can test for anti-civil with Upala. So uh, now I'll show you how, how this works. Uh, uh, a user uh, may decide to enter as many groups as they wish uh, uh, and they may uh, exit uh, groups on will as well. Uh, the groups uh, in turn uh, are free to, to set any parameters of scoring, of deposit, of, deposit, of group size, how many people uh, can be in the group. So uh, this setup, uh, uh, this, um, uh, this absence of, of restrictions uh, creates a market where uh, groups can choose any incentive or governance model that they, they like. Basically, the only restriction that Upala imposes on groups is a bot explosion protocol. Uh, the only thing that group should m must provide is a ability for a bot to explode and run away with the money. So, uh, what it means that uh, yeah, that uh, a group may choose any incentive and governance model. That means we can uh, create a lot of different group types. So. Uh, like, for example, in the lowest level, we can have uh, groups of friends. Then in the central uh, layer, uh, we, can, we may have uh, groups like banks that, uh, that gathers deposits and maybe they pay users some interests. Maybe that uh, these uh, central groups are some celebrities that decided to leverage their reputation to gather people beneath them and to promote to higher levels and somehow earn on that or maybe uh, pay their uh, subgroups. Uh, probably some of the middle groups may choose to be a donor. Uh, that means they, uh, they promote or they let uh, a, a groups with low income uh, maybe from some uh, some developing countries, they will uh, they will drag those groups uh, to a more expensive uh, score provider. So they balance uh, uh, balance this uh, uh, let's say uh, developing country uh, groups uh, with the others uh, with the others groups in this hierarchy. Uh, so uh, these are groups uh, 
uh, this uh, describes a group so, we, um, so uh, yeah different incentives so we, we we can create different incentives for the groups uh, in the same way we can create different entry tests for for the groups so i showed you uh, the france based entry test and here comes the uh, our first mvp uh, which will bring DAO members to Upala, which will uh, uh, which will provide an entry test based on membership in DAOs, and we call this a Blade Runner DAO. Uh, so what Blade Runner DAO does, it just fetches the existing members and assigns a score to them. So we hope this will be uh, the, the first identity system in, in based on Upala protocol. And uh, basically we promote it as our MVP and we are planning to, uh, and we are uh, participating in hackathons with this idea and you know, with this uh, with this Blade Runner DAO. Uh, so this is another, another uh, this is a, hierarchy of groups with entry test based on membership in DAO. So uh, as you remember, user can um, participate in many groups. So imagine a user is already participating in friends based uh, hierarchy. Uh, maybe this user participates in some group which is using a membership in github as a friend test as a anti civil test and this user participates in blade runner dao which uses uh, membership tests in, in dao we call this um we call this uh higher different hierarchies and with different anti civil tests uh, dimensions so imagine one user is uh participating in multiple dimensions uh, that means if this user explodes, uh, it will uh, this uh, his or her account will not long will no longer be available in those dimensions. That means that this account is pretty valuable, and that means that some score provider may assign a pretty high score to users that. Uh, are participating in multiple dimensions. This may be a thousand, a ten, a hundred dollars, or maybe even thousand dollars if we have uh, a set of dimensions that are highly trusted. Like here, a, a user that belongs to some DAO. This user, uh, at the same time, the user has some a score in Bright ID in six handshakes. Six, six handshakes is our another idea. Uh, and this user has a score in IDENA. Uh, so a score provider may feel safe to assign a $1,000 score to a user like this. So uh, this is how uh, a score may be really, really high because uh, it's it will cost probably more than $1,000 to enter all those groups again. So this is uh, what score provider may assume and feel safe to give uh, high high scores so uh, that's basically the the whole protocol uh, some final uh, conclusions and thoughts uh, so upala provides strong incentives to avoid bots uh, uh, because <clears throat> everyone in the group is uh, strongly incentivized to uh, invite only trusted members in. Uh, untrusted members, uh, untrusted members will just explode and steal, basically, uh, effectively steal from participants. Upala uh, is anti-fragile. Uh, every dimension and every identity system based on Upala will suffer from bot attacks and respond with uh, enhancing their entry tests. So the more the the more we see exploding bots, the less there will be exploding bots. Uh, 
a way to think of a score of UPAL score is a thresh is a safe threshold for, for D apps to interact with the user. Uh, imagine a D app which provides universal basic income. It's probably safe to issue one dollar a month to a user with hundred dollar score. It's safer than to to issue one dollar to a person with five dollar score. The same thing with loans. It's probably safe to issue uh, let's say ten dollars loan to a person with thousand dollars account thousand uh, dollars score and another thing to uh, another way to think of upala is that is to first think that about other identities i'd claim that every identity out there has a score so even a state id can be forged uh, uh, a bright id and IDENA identities can be forged by, for example, hiring actors to act like humans or to act like friends, to, uh, to exploit uh, uh, social engineering. So uh, basically every identity has a price to it, uh, but we don't know this price. Uh, as for state ID, uh, we know there are black markets, but we don't know exactly how much does it cost to buy a certain state ID of a certain state. Uh, and Upala provides exactly this price, the price of forging. Uh, as, uh, because uh, if someone explodes, it means that it will at least cost this person uh, at least the same amount of money to enter the system again. Imagine you are stealing uh, $10 from your friends. Uh, they will not let you in again for less than $10. <laughs> you will have to pay them uh, for the damage. So basically, the score that Upala provides is the price of forging and the price of entering of re-entering the system. And it's a fair way of identity pricing. So uh, that's uh, uh, so that's Upala. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, wow, that was a pretty extensive presentation, man. How long have you been working on this? Uh, well, uh, the protocol itself, I was developing it for for more than a year now, and I started to code uh, this year. So uh, currently, uh, I have a smart contract, uh, all the smart contracts implemented on Coven. And right now, uh, I'm uh, looking for a team to, uh, to participate in hackathon, in hackathons, because uh, I uh, uh, suck at content. <laughs> uh, you suck at so what? At front end. At front oh, okay. End. I see. need a front end team. Gotcha. Yeah. So I hope uh, during this hackathon we'll see some, uh, at least a prototype or probably an MVP of Upala, this uh, Blade Runner DAO. So we really hope to ship. Some... When is that hackathon happening? Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, we are participating in Dragon Quest hackathon by Meta Cartel. Awesome. Uh, ETH Turin and Gitcoin. Hmm. Let me let me ask you a question. So, how do you see overall uh, protocols developing in the space over the next over the next years? Nobody's everybody's you know come up with great you know like let's say user agents, right? Um, uh, in the space making a, a, a protocol bid, but nothing seems to really have dripped anywhere across the space. Can you think of anything that is really, you know, that's come out of the same sort of space of a specific use case that then would have application anywhere that, that has a, that has a, you know, a large network effect for protocol usage in the space? Uh, well, I do believe uh, they, uh, the way to to build uh, dig 
decent, real, really decentralized digital identity is to uh, to leverage several systems. So uh, that's what Upala does. So I, I hope that Upala will really wrap over uh, other protocols and provide different dimensions to same to the same person to the same identity. So. Uh, yeah, um, <clears throat> isn't three box also uh, participating in Dragon Quest? Isn't three box ID uh, part? I, of I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. One thing that I, I like about uh, Upala, having listened to your presentation, um, is it goes back to like the the earliest idea about Bitcoin, which was that it was for spam yeah. protection. The civil attack resistance was was basically designed derived, designed around the idea to protect email spam, and then we had. 21 and co who did who did their their bitcoin computer right and then shifted over to spam protection projection which which never really uh you know went anywhere but um so decentralized distributed proofs of identity with some sort of incentive system for for tokenizing reputation that is a signal rather than something that actually is a transfer of value seems to be an interesting uh way that you're looking at this yeah, with Upala. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This yeah. is what we are trying to do. Oh, cool, man. I love how this <laughs> happens spontaneously and, and, and how cool this is. <laughs> yeah, thank, so thank I'm you. Glad I, I, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, Peter. Yeah, thank you for having me.